All these little things are so subtle, but when you hear it back all together, you think, oh wow, that made a big difference. We're looking at the shapes of the words and you're trying to match it kind of like a puzzle. When you're trying to tune a vocal, you don't want to have reverb and delay because that's just adding these elements that don't actually exist. Make sure that the harmony is a little lower than the lead can even match the emotion at the end. If it doesn't dip properly, now it doesn't sound human anymore. All right, guys, so now we have the leads of the song, the harmonies, the backgrounds, the ad libs, everything laid down. Everything's sounding amazing. Um, Golden's not here today. So for this part of the process, I kind of like to be able to dive into the vocal, get everything pocketed nice. And then once it's done, then I get to send it to him and be like, hey, what do you think? Do you have any changes, any ideas? This part of the process gives him a little distance from the song so that he's not stuck listening to it over and over again. And that way I get another perspective on it, not just me. So I'm going to start with the hook first because that's the most important part. And there's a lot of parts to it. So what I like to do is I'll just grab make sure that I grab a hook that has every element that we laid down in it. So as you can see, we have a lead, we have harmonies, which are a left and a right, and we have doubles. So the doubles here on the first half are not on the second half because they're all the same lines. It's, it was duplicated over. But these two lines, as you can see right here, are different lyric. We changed the lyric on the second half, so those were the only ones that we had to double. So when it comes to melodyning, you don't want to have to melodyne the same exact vocal twice. So you kind of want to look at, all right, what vocal is the same, what vocal is different? So I'm going to be listening through and figuring out what I actually need to melodyne, then I'm going to get into melodyning. So the first thing I'm doing is listening to the lead and making sure everything sounds the way I remember it sounding. So you can control. A lot of times when I'm listening back to a vocal, I kind of want to take all the effects off it as far as reverb and delay, just so I can hear what it sounds like like he was sitting right next to me. You can control your animal. Look through your camera roll so I can't get that involved. Okay, so let me grab the right, the actual right track for those backgrounds. Let me make all this inactive. Go up to this. Let's see. Find where I have the leads coming out of. Okay. Let's make these inactive right here. So now it should be dry. Gain control, your animal. Look through your camera roll, so I can't get that involved. I ain't trying to do you wrong, but you just ain't moving right. So I'll keep moving along until you see the light. You can't control your animal. So listening back, I actually like this control better. This was a different take. So this second control, I'm actually going to replace with this first one. So the first one was... Game control! There was a little bit of a shake on the control, and I think the second control sounded a little more controlled. So... You can control your... You can control your animal. So I think that sounds much better. You can control your animal. Look through your camera roll so I can't get that involved. Now second half. Can control your animal. You ain't invincible, but you just can't let it go. I ain't trying to do you wrong. But you just ain't moving right, so why keep moving along until you see the light? So now the second half, I want to make sure that I, which one do I like better? Do I, uh, first I'm comparing the takes. This is just like the final, final comping. Like we've already, we've already laid everything down. And now we're just looking at the actual take and saying, okay, let's match, mix and match, see what's better. I ain't trying to do you wrong. So that's, I ain't trying to do you wrong, but you just ain't moving right. I ain't trying to do you wrong. I ain't trying to do you wrong. So we're like, okay, that sounds better. But you just ain't moving right. But you just ain't moving right. But you just ain't moving right. So why keep moving along until you see the light? Okay, so those all sound great. So now what I'm going to do is unmute these doubles and harmonies. And I like to color code the harmonies just so I know like those are harmonies and not leads. First thing I do is do crossfades. So see all these backgrounds? While we were recording, we were doing it very fast so that uh, Golden didn't lose his train of thought. And while he's in the middle of cutting, you wanna make sure that the artist is in the best mental state 
They're not thinking too much about it. It's really about getting them to a point where they don't have to think about this. It all comes out naturally. So now what I'm doing is just doing fades on these backgrounds that we did one line at a time because that's kind of how we recorded them and getting rid of it so that you don't have little clips. You don't want little uh, click sounds of these little waveforms going in and out. So we're just doing fades, so smoothing it out. And I'm doing it to all the parts where we have backgrounds and harmonies. So that's this process. This is before we get into the melodyning because when you're melodyning, you can't remove clicks or any of that. That's already, now they'll be printed there. So you're removing that from ever happening. Sometimes it's good to just move the waveforms over a little bit. If you see something that's not in time, without really getting into the waveform too technically, it's pretty helpful to just slide these waveforms around so that for timing reasons, when you hear them back and you can see if something was a little early, you want to slide that over. These are the harmonies that I have in brown over here. And then these other red ones are just the doubles. And as you can see, there's no doubles up here because we have those all over here. Once we meld on them, we can move those over. But the lead, he had a different intensity on the trying to do you wrong. I ain't trying to do you wrong, but you just ain't moving right. He's a little more amped there on the. But you just ain't moving right. On this one. But you just ain't moving right. He's a little more laid back, but I like that he, when I hear it back, I like that he's doing it two different ways because that kind of just shows a little bit more of a human quality and a little bit more of the growth of the story. So I like that. So I actually want to keep that. So I'm actually going to be melodyning both of those because they're two different takes and I think it really changes the intensity of it. So now what I'll do is I'm going to keep the original take unmelodyned because ultimately once it's melodyned, I'm going to put it right back here. So I'm going to take the, un the unedited version and just leave it down there just in case there's, in case there's a line that I want to swap out. So now the next step is I'm going to select all of these. This is the lead, doubles, and harmonies and I'm gonna consolidate them. And I'm gonna make sure that they all have the same starting point here. And then I'm just gonna name them, chorus lead, and then chorus lead two, chorus lead three. These are gonna be harmonies. I like to say harmony A, HA, harmony one, and then harmony HA two. So there's really only one harmony, but that's the left and the right represented by the numbers. And that's how I'll start first before we get into these background. Uh, Melodyne. So now I'm going to open up an instance of Melodyne right here. So now this opens up Melodyne down here. And now I'm going to open, I'm going to go into that session. And right here, remember, we go into our audio files. And now that's why I named them in the session set. They're all together. That's your lead, and there's your harmonies. They're already named right. You select them, open it up. Melodyne will import them all one at a time. And now this is where you begin. So this is your raw vocal right here. And we're going to snap the pitch into place. And now we're just going into each line and making sure that the take, when you hear it back, so you go into here and make sure that you can hear your, this part of Melodyne shows you which parts of the vocal you actually want to hear back. So that means we want to hear all of these takes here while we're playing it back. So I go into here. You can't. So now I'm just going to be chopping, making sure that each part of the vocal is singing what he meant for it to, for it to be singing. This is just dialing in on the perfection of it with, without losing the human quality. So this is where we all use our judgment here and figure out what's too much, what's not enough. You can't control your... So the front of that word... Can't control, can't control, you're an animal, a a animal. So see, anytime you feel like if the note's going off a little bit, you're just chopping it, grabbing it, moving it into place. This is where knowing the melody very well comes into play, because if you don't know exactly what you're trying to hear, you may not know where to, where to chop it. So you're listening to where his voice is ending, where the note feels like it's going down, and then chopping that, moving it back into place. I like to do it a cappella and not hear the beat, because that way I can hear every little thing that's going on. While the music's playing, you may not notice a lot of these subtleties happening. And also what I like to do is definitely save, do a save as before, before any of uh, save the arrangements so that we don't forget it. So this is just hook, just in case anything happens, the program shuts down, anything. You like to have that fail save. You're an animal. So, 
an animal. You're an animal. Look through your look. Look through your camera roll. Camera roll. So look through your camera. Look through your camera roll. Do your camera roll. Do your camera roll. So I can't get so. So right there is where you want to make sure that low note, which may not sound like it matters, but it happened so quick. But those little things matter. Uh, so when you listen back, camera roll. So I can't. So I so. And you really want to hit that? That A right there. So I can't get that involved. You may want to make this have a little bit more of a scoop up there. So I can't get that involved. This has a little more natural. That's the thing. You want to maintain what the singer's intention was when they were singing. So I can't get that involved. You want that that involved. Get that involved. And the other thing what Melodyne does is when you place these pitches in, into their proper notes, if you're a, a little bit towards another note, it's just going to put you towards the, the wrong note. So some of these things you're hearing back don't actually sound what he like what he was singing. He wasn't singing that flat. It was just moving it down to the that next note. So that's another thing to remember when you hear it back. Realize like, oh, I didn't sing it like that. Melodyne is just putting it onto that note because you're snapping it into pitch. So I can't get that involved. I ain't trying to do you wrong. I want to make sure that's that. I ain't trying to do. So, and all these little things are going to matter when you hear it back. I ain't trying to do you wrong. I ain't trying to do you wrong. I ain't trying to do you wrong. Do you wrong. Trying to do you wrong. I ain't trying to do you wrong. But you just ain't moving right. Right there, you want that to go up to that. They moving right. So you just say moving right. Say moving right. But you just say moving right. So so I keep. But you just say moving. Right. You just say moving right. So what? Right. So I keep moving right. So why you just say moving right. So what? So right here, we want to make sure this note has that that. Bend down properly. Moving right. So why moving right? So, so we keep maintaining this line right here. You want to, these represent pitch curves. So the way the note bends down and trails down, you can control that in Melodyne. And you want to make sure that while you're doing it, you're not losing the natural I the dip. If it doesn't dip properly, now it doesn't sound human anymore. So you want to make sure you keep the human quality. Moving right. So just say moving right. Moving right. So Moving right, so why keep moving? So why keep moving? Keep moving. So why keep moving along? So why keep moving along? Along. And see how we have the right along. You wrong. A lot of times when you're trying to match notes, just look at how you match that same note. Wrong. The wrong. Long. <clears throat> the wrong and long. We want to make sure those have the same kind of dip up in the beginning. So that's what I'm matching here. Keep moving along, moving along. So why keep moving along, moving right? So why keep moving along until you see the light? Until you see the light? Until you see the light? So right here we can tighten this up a little bit. Until you see the light. And on light, it could be cool to have this part just scoop up a little bit. And really make that more prominent there. So you're just strengthening that part of the note up there. See light. So now when it moves up to the word light, it feels a little more natural. Until you see light. You so it's a line instead of a quick scoop up. You can control that with the time feature here in Melodyne. Until you see light. Until you see light. Until you see light. You can't. So right there we have that natural bend. So you might want to just leave it if you hear it. You can't control your animal. You so sometimes it's good you just leave it alone. If it feels natural, don't touch it. You can't control your animal. You ain't, ain't invincible. So here's our new lyric here, that you ain't invincible lines. Animal, animal, animal. You ain't invincible, but you Invincible, you ain't invincible. You ain't invincible. You ain't invincible, but you just can't let it go. Can't let it go. You just 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 can't let
you just can't let it go. Just can't let it go. So now here's the second take of the ain't trying to do you wrong part. Different intensity. So we're melodying in that now. Let it go. I ain't trying to do you wrong. I ain't trying to do you wrong. Do you wrong? I ain't trying to do you wrong. To do you wrong? I ain't trying to do you wrong. I ain't trying to do you wrong. Oh, I ain't trying to do you wrong. But you just ain't move. But you just ain't moving right. Just ain't moving right. But you just ain't moving right. So moving right. But you just ain't moving right. So why keep moving along? So why keep moving along? Is so anytime you hear anything wrong, just just adjust, and that's pretty much what this is, is just So why keep moving along? So you wanna make sure that So uh, right there, and it's like it's good to sing the notes out, kinda of hear what note you're hearing. Right. So why keep moving along? Right. So why keep moving along? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So why keep moving along until you see the light? Yeah. So that one has the yeah uh, <clears throat> at the end of it. And that's why we want to do that one again because it's more natural coming out of. Until you see the light. Until you see the. You see the light. You see the light. Yeah. See the light. Yeah. So now we'll listen back from the top, make sure we like the lead. You can't control your animal. Look through your camera roll. So I can't get that involved. I ain't trying to do you wrong. But you just ain't moving right. So I'll keep moving along until you see the light. You can't control. So that can't, I want to kind of make that a little straighter. You can't control your animal. You ain't invincible, but you just can't let it go. I ain't trying to do you wrong. You just can't let it go. So the it on let, I want to make sure it lands down. Let it. Can't let it go. I ain't let it go. Yep. I ain't trying to do you wrong, but you just ain't moving right. So why keep moving along? Until you see the light. Yeah. All right, so now we have the lead sounding great. Everything sounds the way I want it to. Now we're going to doubles. So see back into your Melodyne session, you can see you have your leads, you have your doubles, and then the harmonies will be down here. And we labeled it that way so when it loads into Melodyne, it's all going to be in the way you want it to be. So here's your lead. And when you load up the double, you'll see the lead is now a yellow bubble behind in the background. And now our goal here is just matching it as as close as possible. So all those little subtleties that you just made sure were perfect in the lead vocal, you're doing that now with this double here, which he's not saying all the words. So now you have to just make sure you're making sure the entrances of some of these words are matched. This is a timing thing as well. Like if you're seeing a, a word is longer than another word, you might want to adjust it. So when you listen back, you can hear. Can control. And you hear how this the can't could have held out a little longer. So you're creating a little pitch line there and stretching this out a little longer. So now, can't control your and you can hear that note dipped off a little bit in the end and you're just fixing that, bringing it back into the same pitch and then matching these. So it's almost like a puzzle piece at this point. You're just matching these colors and when you hear it back, it should all be much tighter. So hearing this first line back again, you can't control your animal. So see, now it sounds much tighter when you hear those together. Can't control your animal. Look. So now we're at the camera roll line. And that's pretty much what you're doing the whole way through is just matching these, making sure all the little subtleties and the way he's saying the lines are going to be as consistent as possible. So now this double will be really, really tight when you hear it back and it's going to sound like it's not throwing you off. Everything's going to be enhanced rather than there being this other vocal that sounds like it's getting things a little cloudy. Do your camera roll so I camera roll so I can't get I can't get that involved. I can't get that involved. I can't get that involved. That involved. I that involved. I ain't trying to do you wrong. 
So here on wrong, you want that to scoop up there. The double wasn't scooping, but the lead was. So now once we get that. I ain't trying to do you wrong. So now it sounds much cleaner and tighter. I ain't trying to do you wrong, but you just say moving right. Same on right. We want to make sure that is synced up. So we're looking at the shapes of the words too, sliding it over. You can see that's the beginning of the right. And these are all little things that you'll never notice in real time most of the time because they're so subtle, but when you hear it back all together, you'll be like, oh wow, that made a big difference. You're really just honing in on all those small details. And paying attention to detail is the most important thing in anything creative, especially music, where if you're not noticing something's going on or something's not as tight as it could be, how would you know to fix it? So you kind of have to really keep your ears open when you do these things. They move and ride. Moving right, so you just say moving right. You hear these two back. Ain't trying to do you wrong, but you just say moving right. So why keep moving along? So why keep moving along? Why keep moving along? Been along. And see how he's trailing off at the end of that. That note, that's just more of a natural way he sings. So we want to maintain that and keep that. We don't want to lose that personality in this note. Along. Right at the end of the word long. So now we're going to match the way we chop the light up so that it has that scoop up note from the C sharp to the D. And now all this, we didn't need to double that. We're going to chop these over when we get back into Pro Tools. So that way we're not melodyning, can't control again and all those lines. We just did that on the first half. So those are all going to be valid when we go back in the session and we're able to copy those back over. You ain't invincible. But so we want to make sure those notes stay. You ain't invincible, but you just can't let it go. So right on let, let's make sure we get that. You just can't let it go. You just can't let it go. You just can't let it go. Let it go. Go. So yeah, it's very, uh, very time consuming, very detail oriented, but promise you that this is all worth it in the end when you do all this stuff. Now we don't need to hear the lead again. Now that we've made the double right, now that we've got all the way to the end, we can use the double as our reference when we do the second double. So that was for the left channel. This one's for the right channel. Now sometimes in Melodyne, if there's a lot of angst in the vocal, Melody may not know what note you were trying to hit. So in this first note, you can see that it's putting this note in a different place. You want to do correct detection, grab that, and then move it up to where you think it's supposed to be, which is up there. So that way, it's not putting it in the wrong octave. So now you're able to edit that note again because it was so much angst. So now when you hear it back, it'll be tighter. Can control a -a animal. So now we're lining those up. A -a animal. Do your camera roll. So let's tighten the camera. See how they, the C in camera was a little quick. We can extend that out. Do your camera roll. Do your camera roll. Do your camera roll. Can't get that involved. Can't get that involved. Trying to do you, trying to do you wrong. Trying to do you wrong. Trying to do you wrong, oh, trying to do you wrong, trying to do you wrong, oh, trying to do you wrong, just say moving, just say moving right, oh, say moving right, just say moving right, keep this moving, be held on a little longer, moving right, moving right, keep moving along. Keep moving, keep moving along. Keep moving along, keep moving along. Uh, till you see the light, till you see the light, till you see the light, see the light. Uh, till you see the light. So now that light line sounds better when you move this note up. It's a little more of a natural transition, so we can add that on both of the left and right. Till you see the light. And then the last line over here, let's double this and this. Ain't invincible. 
These are the new lines that had different lyric on the second half. Ain't invincible. Ain't invincible. Ain't invincible. Just can't let it go. Just can't let it go. So I was going to make sure that it <clears throat> goes down to the right note. Let it. Can't let it go. So I'm going to listen to those individually on the doubles just to make sure. Sometimes when there's so much angst, you actually can't hear. You can't physically see the note that it's trying to hit. Just can't let it go. Because there's so much angst, Melodyne doesn't even know that note. So you have to do it by ear. Can't let it go. So it's a little sharp. Can't let it go. That sounds better. And now let's go to the third lead and listen. Just can't let it go. Can't let it go. There you go. That sounds right. So now we're just going to make sure the left and right are good there. Okay, everything is perfect on both of those. And now it's on to the harmony part, which is only happening on the second half of the hook. So now we're going to go to this. So now we're making sure these notes, and now it's easier to line the timing up now with these because they're not overlapping each other. So you can actually see them a little easier. So see, you can see that note could be a little longer there. This note could be a little longer there. And tightening up the timing of everything is just going to make it sound that much more tighter and less distracting in the final version of the song. So let me go. Can't control. Can't control. And you're making sure it's hitting those notes, tightening that up. You can't control. You can't control, you can't control, you can't control, you're an animal, you're an animal. So, so you're just shortening things when they're a little too long, because you don't want a harmony note to hang out longer than the lead, or you're going to hear it, and it's going to jump out to you and feel weird. So you always want to make sure everything is in sync with each other, so that way it blends better, and then the final version of the song is not going to be falling apart when things are too loud or too soft. Animal, animal, you ain't invincible, you ain't invincible, you ain't invincible, but you just can't let it. So you can hear where a note is going wrong and then you just move it up and you're trying to just match that same type of bend down. Can't let it. That's the note you want that to land on. You just can't let it go. Just can't let it go. Just can't let it go. You just can't let it go. Go, go. I ain't trying to do you wrong. I ain't trying to do you wrong. So these harmonies go above the note, above the lead. Just give it a little bit of a lift. I ain't trying to do you wrong. So you want that to scoop. So the word wrong has much more synchronicity to it between the two notes so that you don't feel like one is scooping, one's not. This will give it more consistency. I'm trying to do you wrong. And now it feels better. I ain't trying to do you wrong. I ain't trying to do you wrong. But you just say moving right. So let's tighten these up. Hey, so why keep they moving right? So why Same thing we want to do here. Make sure this note, the bend is natural. Moving right. So why keep moving along? So why keep moving along? Same thing with the long. Want to make sure that's there. Why keep moving along? So if you if you use your eyes, you could see where the transients are. You could see where the beginnings of the notes are ending, the shape of the notes, and you're trying to match it, kind of like a puzzle, where you could see, okay, this note's not right there. You want to move that up there so it's in sync with the note below. I keep moving along until you see the light. So this is where on. Want to make sure we hit that note there. And also that the scoop happens at the same time. Um. So. Hunt. So that's right. Till you see. So see that till you see. And you can hear when you move those notes, you'll hear the blend. That's the right blend because you can hear the two notes syncing with each other harmoniously. Until you see the light. The light. See the light. And now you're blending that. The line. Tightening that up. See where this goes down there? You're just grabbing any part where it may drift off the, the note and just pulling it right back in. Do you see the light? 
Lie. Lie. So we go there. Until you see the light. So this note right here can be. Until you see the light. So now that's your last note there. So this was, you're just keeping it in the scale of F sharp minor slash A major. That's how you know when you're looking at these notes, none of these notes are going to fall out of that scale. So see when this went to that note, a G is not in the, the right scale. So you, that's why you know it's got to be the G sharp instead. Same with this. And now when you went to that scoop there, it's going from a G sharp to an A. Until you see the light. So now that we have that, we're going to do the same thing we did as we did with the doubles. You're just loading up just the harmony note. And now we're going to double that harmony note, which was the left and the right. So now we're syncing up these notes, looking at length, making sure that that's all the way we want it to be as far as timing goes. And this is really where you nail your timing and your notes and your scooping, all the little subtleties that happen in a vocal that are going to matter at the end. When you hear the, the tightness of a vocal, this is all being controlled and dictated in this Melodyne session. Animal. So now we're just hearing the harmony note by itself, and we're syncing up the left to the right. Ain't invincible. Ain't invincible. Ain't invincible. Melodyne just gives you so much flexibility. If something's wrong, you can move it, you can slide it, you can do really some crazy stuff with it. So it's just so helpful as a tool when you're just tidying up stuff in the end. It's always key to get the best vocal possible so that when you get into Melodyne, you don't have a lot of legwork to do. It's really just tightening up the lead. You know, and Golden did such a great job with his delivery that all this is is just slight tweaks and you're moving things around, getting the timing right. These are all those little subtleties that you may not even notice while you're listening in real time. So it's helpful that when it's all kind of slowed down and you're looking at all the, the details and the nuances of it, that you're able to make these changes and feel better about the final vocal and nothing's jumping out to you. Just can't let it go. Trying to do you wrong. So these should Trying to, trying to, trying to. These should be here. Trying to. Trying to do you wrong. Just say moving right. So I'll move this up here. Just say moving right. And anytime you hear like, oh, that doesn't sound as tight as it could be, you just make sure the curve is a little closer to the pitch center. You just see this, this line represents exactly where he's singing. So you're just making sure that these lines all are as close to that center as possible so the vocal will be more in tune. Keep moving along. Moving along. Um, really want to nail that until until you see the light. So in getting that scoop, you can hear when something's not scooping right, how much of a difference it makes. But once you tighten it up, see the light. Now it all of a sudden feels way more harmonious, and then you can even match the emotion at the end. Light. So now his crack at the end of his voice, though both he did it both times. But they were at different parts, timing-wise, but now they're at the exact same time, and they'll sync up left and right, and it'll sound much better. So now that we have everything sounding right, we're going to select it all, and then we're going to save the audio. And we're going to put that back into the session. We're just going to call it Hook X, just for naming purposes. And now it's turning them all into audio. You're hitting no, because there's some things that are clipping. But that's natural because some of the vocal was distorting a little bit. But when we put it back in here, we can fix all that. So now what I'll do is an import. And I'm going to go into the folder Hook X. I'm going to select all these, add that, hit Done, New Track. So now it's going to place, these are now the affected vocals. And we're going to be replacing the lead with these affected vocals. So we named them that way so that they all line up. We're going to delete the old vocal because we've already, remember, we put it on the playlist, so we don't, we're not losing anything. We're deleting that. We're grabbing these and then sliding these right back down, and they're going to be right where the old ones were, and we can delete these tracks. So now we have the Melodyne vocal here. And before we do these backgrounds here, we're just going to listen back and make sure that the pocket of everything feels good. You can't control your Camera roll, so I can't get that involved. 
And that's and so to me that sounds awesome. I love the way that feels. And remember, we're hearing everything at zero volume, meaning the harmony blends. You typically want to go in and make sure that the harmony is a little lower than the lead, so that way you don't lose the lead melody. And remember, the second half we're not even hearing these doubles, and we're not hearing any reverb or delay because I muted it, so that when we heard back the lead, we're not getting distracted by. When you're trying to tune a vocal or fix a vocal or find nuances and make sure that things are right, you don't want to have reverb and delay because that's actually just adding an echo or it's adding these elements that don't actually exist. So you're giving yourself more resistance or more artifacts to work around. So you want to make sure that while you're doing that, you're just hearing just the vocal as if it was happening right in the room with you and that way you're going to know. So now the next step of this is these backgrounds are very important. This is the next thing that we have to melodize, and that's going to really help dictate how this hook feels and what we need to do. And then once we have these backgrounds melodyne, then I will go in and I'm gonna re-tighten this up to the click track because we don't have any drums yet, but if it goes to the click track, that's gonna mean that once we do add drums, everything's gonna all sync up nice. Yeah. 